Hey, it's Nick from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I wanted to go over camera focal length in 3D, how to change it, and when to change it, and what it does to your renders. So let's head on in. Uh, I was reminded of focal length and how important it was when I came across this uh, Behance project here called Telly Wide. And what he did was make these animated GIFs that show you kind of the same perspective or the same composition of a, of a render, but with two very different focal lengths. One really zoomed in and one really wide, right? Uh, and it, it's really, it really shows you how much choosing the right focal length can change the look of a render and what it does. Let me show you a couple of these uh, last ones here that are really great. This one's awesome. Uh, you can see how it, how when you zoom in and step back, it kind of flattens out your renders and it gives a very, very different look. This one's really drastic. You can see, again, how it flattens out, how the background changes. And I wanted to show you how to set this up in Cinema 4D and also when to change it and what it does to the feeling of your render. So let's head on into Cinema. You can see we have a really basic scene here. We have our uh, kind of character here, and we have three spheres. These are all the same size, and we have just this giant buckyball back here just for scale, right? So let's set up a camera and let's do uh, what we should never do, which is just add a camera and then start animating, right? Because the camera that it gives us is just kind of this basic 36 millimeter classic camera, they call it. So you can see in our camera settings, under focal length, we're going to have some presets here. And all these presets do is just give you a number. Uh, you can dial this number into whatever you want, but you can actually open this menu up and see we have a super wide angle lens, really wide 15 millimeters, normal wide angle, all the way up into a super telephoto lens, 300 millimeters, really zoomed in, like stuff you see on the side of, um, of uh, sporting events and stuff like that, right? And the one we get by default is this 36 millimeter classic lens. And this is a classic lens. You know, somewhere between a 30 and a 50 is kind of a normal lens. Um, it's kind of almost what our eyes see. You know, it's it's just kind of plain and, and normal, and that's fine. You know, it's actually the camera. If you don't have a camera in cinema, it's the camera that you move around with. It's, it's a normal lens for a reason, right? Um, it doesn't really give too much perspective either way, and it just kind of gives you a general sense of where you are. And that's the exact reason why you should always think about changing it when you add it to your scene. Because choosing the right focal length will give you a drastically different, uh, first of all, perspective on your scene, but in some cases, a big emotional difference to what the render looks like to your viewers. And I wanted to give you an example here. So let's do some really kind of basic setups, and then I'm gonna show you some other examples and some other scene files. Um, so first of all, let's set up a really wide angle lens, 20 millimeters, and you can see as soon as we did that, the, the camera, kind of opened up, we see more of the scene, which means we have to zoom in to get the same um, composition with a wider lens. We're going to have to zoom in to make up the difference, right? So let's let's say that is, you know, wide angle and our, our character is kind of full frame. And then now let's duplicate this camera and make this a 100 millimeter lens, okay? So now we're zoomed in. We just have to zoom out again to kind of match the same um, composition. So now look at the difference between this. This is basically what these these GIFs were showing you is the difference between this render and this render. So let's let's see what changes. First of all, check out the spheres. These three spheres are the same size in in kind of in, in real life or in 3D life, I guess. They're all 28 centimeters, but in when we're zoomed in and we're far away, all of our um, all of our parallax and all of our perspective kind of goes away. Everything flattens out, which means these three spheres look the same size. And the only reason we know one's in front of the other is because they're physically in front of each other. But watch what happens when we move to the wide angle lens. Now you can see there's a big difference between this one and this one, and it it amplifies the difference in scale. So again, look at our character in scale compared to our buckyball back here. It's roughly, I don't know, maybe half the size, you know, in, in height. 
and and then when we flatten it out it's almost the same size as our character and so you can see picking the right lens really gives you a different perspective literally a different perspective on your scene so let me show you um Another way to, to use telephoto and wide-angle lenses, the other way to think about it is, is are you far away from this object or are you close up to it? Um, so that is one way to think about when to choose the right focal length. If you're filming something from far away, you want it to feel like it's you're, you are far away from the object and you're kind of you know spying on it or you're you're showing it from afar or from across a river or from up in the air, you want to zoom in because you, you are physically far away. You need to zoom in to see your object. If you feel like you're closer to the object, like it's maybe looming over you, maybe it's um, you want your object to feel like it's bigger than you, use a wide-angle lens because in traditional photography, you're going to pull a wide angle lens out of your bag to film things like large buildings and, you know, the Eiffel Tower and big giant things that are hanging above you. You want to bring out this wide angle lens so you could get it all into frame, right? Whereas when you're far away, you want to get out your zoom lens to, to kind of zoom in on it and to, um, see what's going on from afar. So that's one way to think about it. How close are you to your object? compared to how large it is. So let me give you another example. This isn't just for characters. Of course, if you go study uh, you know, photography or composition or filmmaking, all these rules are in place to give you an idea of how to film a scene, right? Um, but it works for more than just characters and for, for like street photography, right? If we have a um, logo, we'll get, we'll get to that one in a second here. If we have a logo, it also works. These these um, perspectives matter. So if you want your logo to feel big and important, you know, maybe it's a powerful brand like a like a Gatorade or some sporting brand, and you want it to make it feel big and metal and large and NFL and whatever, you, you're going to see a lot of those are filmed with wide-angle lenses. And those scenes are filmed with wide-angle lenses because it makes them feel large. It makes them feel so large that we could barely contain it in the scene, and we have to get a wide-angle lens to do it. In this case, we have a 15 millimeter, which is the super wide over here, super wide-angle lens to kind of make it feel really big. Like, look at all the perspective we get on this. Look at how large that G is compared to the rest of the logo, right? And now let's switch it. If we click here, we're going to go to a 80 millimeter lens, which is more of a portrait lens. This is more of a, you know, of a a lens we would shoot um, like uh, on on like a, a flat background with, and you don't want too much perspective and all that. This normal lens gives gives this logo more of a normal feel. You know, the perspective isn't drastic. It looks pretty plain. It looks kind of small. But again, compare that to this, right? Now we when we render, we're gonna get this really giant G, big perspective. So it. It matters not just for character stuff, but also for logos. Let's look at one more uh, example here. Uh, another uh, logo here. We have our wide angle, which is we're looking up at the logo. Again, it's looking large and powerful and kind of bigger than we are, right? And then if we contrast that with a telephoto, kind of zoom in. In this case, it's a 200 millimeter. It looks more small. It looks more plain. In this scale, it looks more like you know, the size of like a, of a playing card. And at this scale, uh, it looks more like the size of a, of a building, right? Just by changing the, the, the camera angle. Um, well, let's jump to the, to the city example here. And again, when choosing, uh, when choosing your camera, what, where do you want to feel like you're shooting from? So in this case, uh, we're using city kit on in preview mode so it renders really quickly here no textures it's just like the outlines of the buildings here but in in uh tele mode here we have let's check the the millimeters we have a 100 millimeter lens and what this is doing is it make it, it makes it feel like we're shooting the city from kind of a boat perspective or across the river or away from the city we are you know mile away maybe and we're shooting towards the skyline and this makes the city feel romantic and and makes it feel flat. So the perspective, there's not almost any perspective from this building to this building, right? 
But contrast that to the wide angle lens, lens that we're basically shooting the same perspective, right? So we're, we're walking way close into the city. Now we're close to all the buildings and we're getting roughly the same uh, composition um, and roughly the same amount of buildings in the scene here. But now we have a drastically different feel. Now the city feels, to me, it feels overwhelming. It feels large. It feels like it never ends. You know, it feels like, and look at the perspective difference between, again, this building and this building where they used to be roughly the same size, now they are hugely different. And again, um, these this matters to not only the feeling of the photo, uh, but what you're trying to get across to your viewer. Um, if you want your viewer to feel like your logo or your city or your, your render is big and bigger than life, uh, think about a wide angle lens. If you want it to feel more constrained and more um, comfortable and more, you know, uh, fun. Think about a telephoto lens. That might be a good way to think about it. Let me go through a couple more here. We have a wide angle, like we're standing in the street here and looking up at one of the buildings, right? We have this just like general wide angle, and then we have a telephoto that that makes us more like we're spying or something, like we're zooming in from afar, right? And this looks like this this looks like we're we're kind of standing and zooming way way in look at the perspective doesn't change um this also matters from above uh so if you're in a helicopter and you're trying to zoom into the city you're gonna use a, a more of a telephoto lens you want to kind of fly in and it, it gives us this almost isometric feeling like a like a video game where everything is the same perspective and again this is a different feeling than if we shoot with a wide angle lens and try to get everything in right and uh one more thing just to just to kind of um nail this home when when you're uh setting up your scene think about again the scale of your object and also how close you are to it how close you want to feel to it, and also if you want it to uh, appear to be large or appear to be small. So again, more cutesy, looking down on something. Imagine, uh, in I guess we'll get we'll, I'll give you one more rule, uh, which is if you're looking down at something, um, think of what you look down at. You look down at. Um, you know, like puppies and little things and babies. And we're programmed to look down onto things that are small and cutesy and, and, and comfortable and, and not threatening. Right. So that's when we would maybe use a more zoomed in looking down approach to our composition. Right. Check him out. He doesn't look threatening, but let's go ahead and look kind of the same angle almost still looking up but look at how much larger he looks and especially if we kind of zoom under right and we start looking up at objects with a wide angle lens um, we're getting we're getting that kind of looming and larger than life and much more powerful look so anyway I know I, I've probably repeated myself a couple times in that video but it's all to drive the the hopefully the idea home that you should never trust or never just stick with the standard lens don't just grab a camera and start animating it think about what that camera is your camera is another part and another character in your animation whether you're doing logos actual characters flying through scenes picking the right lens is something that a, an actual photographer really thinks about um, and you should too because that's what you're doing in 3d you're you're picking your lens, you're pulling your camera out of your bag and looking around your scene and trying to film it in the way, in the best way possible. And it doesn't just mean texturing things right. It doesn't just mean modeling things or animating things right. What can really make a big difference is choosing the right camera, the right focal length and the right composition. So that's a really short video on something that's a big topic. If you guys want to learn more, I encourage you to study, um, film composition uh tv shows uh there's you know commercial composition and even just still photography uh change the way i look at a lot of this stuff just by learning how to shoot still photography what the different compositions mean and what kind of um what effect they have on the final render so anyway uh 
quick one today, but uh, not a lot of button pushing, but we'll uh, push more buttons later, I promise. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye, everybody.